والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه بعد عن أنس رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه واتفق عليه Another hadith which is agreed upon by both Al-Imam Bukhari and Al-Imam Muslim with regards to its authenticity narrated by Anas ibn Malik who we know served our beloved Prophet Sallallahu for 10 years May Allah be pleased with him and with all the illustrious companions of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam An Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him he said لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. The Prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم that none of you believe, none of you believe. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى until. So we cannot call ourselves true believers unless we find this attribute within ourselves. What attribute is that? حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. None of you truly believe until they love for their brother what they love for themselves. You know, I pondered over this because people are always talking about what is success, especially in the dunya. We know that ultimate success is only in the Akhirah. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدِخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازَ وَمِنَ حَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ Allah SWT says, whoever is saved from the fire and entered into paradise, then they are successful. They've succeeded. So, ultimate success, there is no such thing on the dunya. But in the Akhirah, ultimate success is to be saved from the fire and entered into paradise. So, is there then perhaps <coughs> some type of success that we can attain on the dunya? And the key lies in this hadith. The key lies in this hadith. And that is, number one, if you truly want to be successful in this world, and success is not measured by money, material possessions, status, position, you know, academic certificates hanging on the wall, tribe, race. But how is success measured? قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس الغنى عن كثرة العرض ولكن الغنى غنى النفس. True wealth, again, that is the worldly perspective of success. People measure success by, by wealth and the like thereof. The Prophet said, وسلم, he said, <coughs> True wealth is not measured by material possession. But true wealth is measured by the satisfaction of the heart. Like that Sahabi who was walking through the market of Medina. And he was shouting at the top of his voice, Ana aghna nas, ana aghna nas, I'm the richest of all people. And the people looked at him, they saw, but this man is poor. His stove is tattered, and he's got a stone tied to his belly to fight the pangs of hunger. He must be something wrong with him. So they took him to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, inna hadha rajul, la yakhlu lahu illa nida'un fil aswaqi ana akhlan nas. He said, O Messenger of Allah, nothing comes from this man except a shout at the top of his voice in the marketplace, I'm the richest of all people. The Prophet asked him, Sallallahu Are you truly the richest of all people? The man smiled and said, Naam Ya Rasulullah. Indeed I am a messenger of Allah. The Prophet asked him, Waqaif. The Prophet understood, but he wanted to teach Sahaba a lesson. The Prophet asked him, Waqaif, how are you the richest of all people? The man smiled and said, Ya Rasulullah, inni sami'tuka taqoon, warda bima qasamallahu laka takul aghna nas. He said, indeed, O Messenger of Allah, I heard you say, be satisfied with the portion that Allah has put out for you and you'll be the richest of all people. So this man had contentment. He was satisfied, number one, with what Allah had put out for him. And also, just as, and perhaps even more important, 
he was satisfied with what Allah had put out for others. This is a very, very important part of attaining success on the dunya. We cannot be successful unless we are satisfied with our portion and we are also unsatisfied for the portion that Allah has granted others, even if it is over us. For indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits us when He says, do not desire those things with which Allah has favored some of you over others. And we know all the, uh, the dangers of hasad, envy. When a person sees something that Allah has granted somebody else, and a person wishes it away from that person. That's the definition of hasad. To desire a favor away from the one who is being envied. What does the Prophet say? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al Hasadu Yakul al Hasanat Kama Takul al Nar al Hatab. Envy eats away at a person's good deeds, like the fire eats away at the firewood. So, in that case, if we are not satisfied with what Allah has put out for others, and we can't be happy for them, and say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Zadakallah, then we'll never attain any type of success on this dunya. May Allah make us of those who truly love for each other, but we love for ourselves. وَأَخِرُوا دَعْوَانَا عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَ